You are listening to the BJJ Globetrotters Pirate Radio Podcast, brought to you from Saint Bart in the French West Indies. We talk jujitsu, traveling, and people who do things a bit different in life. I am your host, Christian Grogard. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode six of the. BJJ Club Trotters Pirate Radio Podcast. Uh, it's been a while since I um, released the last episode. I think it's been almost a month. Um, there are a few reasons for this. I actually have a handful of really nice uh, interviews uh, already recorded and uh, ready to uh, to publish, but uh, I had my hands on, on other things. Uh, we just finished the, the camp here in St. Bart. Uh, the Caribbean island camp of of um, of this year, um, one of them. Uh, it was a really nice week. It was um, relaxing. Everything went well. We had no major catastrophes. A uh, few instructors had to pull out last minute, but that was about it. And uh, we managed to cover all the classes. And I think everything went really well. Um, it was incredibly exhausting, as as this camp always is, but. Um, I enjoyed every moment of it. Of it. So uh, now I have a little break until the next camp. It's going to be two months from now before uh, before I go anywhere. So I have uh, two months kind of dedicated here in in my basement to uh, to make other projects happen in the in the BJJ Globetrotters little world. Um, so that's what I've done. Um, I have, I've been trying to finish up, wrap up this uh, episode and publish it for a while, but um, I've been really um, deep into, I think, one of the biggest projects of BTJ Globetrotters so far. Uh, it's something I've been working on, or at least thinking about, for, for at least a year or two. Um, around that time frame, I had this idea. Um, I made this, this kind of overview flowchart of of all the areas like of jiu-jitsu that that bjj club charters kind of cover and and one of them that we haven't touched yet really um well we have through the camps but haven't really been uh doing anything anything in terms of instructional material uh for the for the jiu-jitsu community apart from of course offering classes at the camps um BTJ Club Charters in itself hasn't really published any like instructionals or anything. Um, I've been struggling with with how to how to get around this for a while, and I think we finally kind of cracked the code to it. So um, I I didn't want to do like instructional DVDs with myself. That would be first of all a lot of work, and uh, I don't think I don't think being an instructor is kind of what I contribute to the jiu jitsu community with. Um, I like to teach my little group here, but um, being an instructor as a career is uh, is probably not really for me. Um, I don't like to put myself on a pedestal like that. Um, but that's uh, that's another much longer talk. Um, so I I put up a few kind of instructional videos um, um, on my my older blog shogunhq.com, which you can check out. I, I I ran that blog for many years and um, kind of filmed some stuff there, but it was most it was more um, with the purpose of helping myself to understand what I was teaching. I think I learned a lot of my jujitsu through teaching, so I thought, uh, let me try and try and make some videos of what I feel like I can contribute with and uh, and uh, put that online. Um, anyway, obviously we have a lot of uh, instructional material at the camps. Uh, but I never really got around how to how to kind of use it or share it. Um, I've been around the idea for a while of doing an, a kind of pay site like MG in Action, Keenan Online, with uh, like a, a really low uh, monthly fee, and you have access to all this information. Uh, that would that would quickly um, that would quickly. Um, require that I actually produce a lot of uh, uh, videos all the time, which I really don't want to. Uh, I don't feel like I could, probably, um, I don't know, maybe, but uh, I really don't want to be uh, 
hooked up on, on having to make uh, a certain amount of videos all the time, um, simply because of time. And uh, anyway, um, then we have all the videos from the camps, but uh, I don't want to sell them. You know, I can't really sell them. The, the, the material belongs to the instructors. Um, and um, would also take a lot of work to film it professionally and so on. Uh, so and and throughout the years, a lot of people have, have been been coming up to me and kind of asking, uh, "Why don't you you know put the videos online from the camps?" And it's kind of it's it's kind of um, it's a lot of work logistically to to sort everything, upload, edit, make sure it's nice quality, the sound is all right. Uh, ask the instructors if they want to do it or not. If they want their, I mean, some instructors want to have their videos online, some don't. And uh, so there's a lot of logistics in it. And um, so recently, I, th I think I kind of cracked the code to this. Uh, first of all, uh, we I hired uh, my first full-time employee. Uh, there's a lot of people working for Globetrotters in like smaller kind of departments and they, like we have graphical designers and um, a lot of people doing a lot of things. But uh, but I hired my first like actual full-time employee, which is Vara. Uh, some of you, who, if you've been to to some of the camps in Copenhagen or Belgium, you definitely know who she is. Um, she's been working for me for many years in Copenhagen in my academy, and um, now she moved, when I moved to uh, the Caribbean, she moved to Thailand, and uh, I uh, I hired her. I, I, I managed to um, make her quit her job in Thailand and uh, work for me instead. So this has helped me tremendously. She's taking care of so much stuff uh, that I finally have time to do fun projects that are kind of nice to have projects and not need to have. Um, so I decided to do this video, um, video kind of library for club Globetrotters. And um, the way I'm going to do it is it's going to be like a, a fully organized, huge library already of all the videos we can, uh, we've been able to kind of find online of uh um, classes and highlight videos and rolling footage and uh, everything we can find from the camps, from the Globe Tourist camps. And it's all being organized and like um, sorted and um, categorized on this video page. Um, and and I've, I found, um, I managed to find one of my friends who was uh, uh, Florian. Hi, Florian. He's, uh, he's a professional video guy and uh, he's been doing documentaries on Netflix and stuff. And uh, he's going to be, I'm going to take him to all the camps this year and film all the classes um, that the instructors would like to have online. So we're going to have like a full on machine running of uh, someone professionally filming all the classes at the camp, camps and um, going home, editing it, put it putting them online. And uh, VAR is going to categorize everything, put it on the site and uh, it's going to be online. So um, this is all going to be completely free. I don't want to charge anything for it. Um, it would be complicated. And uh, with, like, how do you charge anything from that? And what do the instructors get? And it wouldn't work. And on the other hand, I just want to do this for kind of for karma. You know, I think it, it, it adds a lot of, uh, of value to the, to the camp participants uh, because you don't have to worry about remembering everything. After the camp, you go home, you can look up the exact camp you attended. And right there, you're going to have all the... Um, all the uh, videos of the classes there uh, to review. Also, I think this is something I want to do for all those people who can't afford to go to the camps. Um, I know it's uh, it's not cheap. You know, you have to take a week off work and you have to fly and get food and accommodation and stuff. So I know there's a lot of people out there who don't have instructors or just can't afford to go to a camp. And uh, I think it would be nice to, uh, to kind of reach out in a way and offer this... Um, I, I think in the long run, the, the karma that I'll kind of get out of this uh, will be worth much more than if I charged, I don't know, two ninety nine a month from a few hundred people. So uh, screw the money. I'm going to do this entirely for free. We've been working on this. When I finally started to actually build the back end of this on the website, um, it's been like three or four months now of uh, setting that up. And I pretty much spent most of my office time on it. So it's a really big project. And we're just wrapping it up these days and uh, adding the last videos and asking all the instructors uh, to approve every individual video we put up. Um, so 
I'm really excited about uh, announcing this project finally, and um, I think it's going to be great for the community. So, um, yeah, just uh, sitting here every day and sorting through videos, old videos, and putting them up. There's a lot of old stuff that's not like the, the quality I was looking for, but um, we are going to have this guy film everything professionally from now on, so you can go in and look at all the classes. Um, and um, that's it. Very excited about it. Um, I can't wait to see what comes out of this. As always, you, you never know if, if you, you reach out to the to the one right person, you know, who uh, who are, gets happy for getting this free uh, kind of video library, and you never know how they can affect your life. So, so this is kind of my my. I just kind of throw karma out in the universe, and we'll just see what comes back, what comes out of it. Um, so the BJJ Club Trader Video Library is going to be uh, announced shortly, uh, hopefully within a week or so. It should be up and running. So keep your eye out on uh, on the, our Facebook group or website, um, and it's going to be there. Anyway, enough about that. Um, we have an interview in this episode with uh, family, the Woodies, uh, one of the sponsored travelers from um, from last year. Uh, the interview uh, was done a few months ago, I think, but it's kind of been in line to get on the podcast. So I think this is really interesting because a lot of people are, are doing jiu-jitsu trips and uh, these guys are going for six months around the U.S. and stuff. Um, and um, a lot of people are doing this, but I, I think this is kind of a rare case because they're a family with two little kids. Uh, so there are four people doing a six-month jiu-jitsu trip. And uh, I think that's that's uh, incredibly uh, ambitious and pretty cool to do that. So I thought there was a very interesting story to hear more about. So um, I'm going to uh, run the, the interview now and uh, I'll get back to you once it's over. Enjoy. So I'm going to try to not start every sentence with so. That's a bad, that's a, that's a bad, uh, <laughs> bad habit I have. It's like... Uh, do you know those um do you know all these uh jiu-jitsu instructionals especially marcelo garcia there's like one guy translating all of them and he all always started every single sentence with okay guys yes okay guys <laughs> <laughs> it drives me crazy and then i realized then i realized i start every every of these with like so <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not much better uh so okay guys um live from where are you right now i have no idea uh we're in san diego california san diego live i have adam and lily where's the rest of the family um they're downstairs, they're downstairs hanging they're downstairs. out downstairs. Being yeah okay okay so um i'm gonna let you guys uh introduce yourself and in, in your trip just really quick um i've been briefly following your, your blog and your, your trip. And I thought it was um, kind of interesting because you are a family of four doing a kind of intense jujitsu trip for how long, six months or something? Yeah. Six months, six months or a bit over six months or away from home. Right. Usually uh, when I, when people do this, it's like a single guy or something <laughs> with, with nothing at home to, to leave. So uh, why don't you tell, tell just briefly uh, tell us about the, the story of your trip, like, um, so it was quite interesting. So, um, obviously I've been working for, uh, for the same company for about 10 years and been sort of putting away leave and our leave sort of accrues, uh, with the company that I'm working for. Um, a couple of guys from work, we were joking around. Um, when I said I had six months paid leave <laughs> and one of them said, uh, you know, it'd be, you just, uh, piss off and go to a, um, go on a trip, do jujitsu. We sort of laughed about it, and I think within 24 hours, I'd um, spun the idea to uh, Dion, my wife, and um, the wheels were in motion. So we, um, we we sort of worked out a few things if we could possibly do it. Um, told the, then finally told the kids and worked out uh, our our schooling. A sort of a rough itinerary on where we wanted to go, with what countries we wanted to see, and then um, finally settled on um, coming to the United States and road tripping, road tripping around there and travelling and training as much as we can with all the, uh, all I suppose our, our heroes 
and the um and the the, the big stars that were over here. Right. What 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 was your job actually, and your wife's job? I guess. What what, what did you leave um, behind? Yeah. So um, I'm a I work in the in the mining industry. I'm a, I'm a heavy duty um, mechanic by trade. So right. fix all big haul trucks um, and and mining equipment. Um, so I'm, I'm a workshop supervisor there, and my wife is a uh, massage therapist, and she uh, works for herself. So we, I took the leave from work, and basically she shut her business for six months, um, so we could go and go and travel and go on this crazy adventure. Right. That's yeah. That's that's a big decision. I I I can totally recognize that where where like some idea comes up and someone says, "Hey, let's do that," and we're like. Ah, that's stupid. That's never going to happen. And then, kind of, the, the the seed is planted in your mind, and then there's there's no turning back at that point, really, for actually doing it. Right. I I, I think the the moment you tell someone outside of your immediate family, right, it's sort of, it's sort of set on set in stone. Right. <laughs> you sort of you sort of feel you can't go back on the idea. Yeah. Even though even though, um, at times we're like, oh, how can we make this work? Mm. Um, once we'd sort of got it out there that we were thinking about doing it, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it was sort of stuck then and we just, we just made it happen. Right. Um, and it's been absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's been amazing. Yeah. I, I can't, yeah, I can totally relate to that. It's, uh, I think I've, I've done the same with many ideas I had where I thought, okay, that might not be realistic or it might be too stupid or something. But as soon as you tell people about it, then it's suddenly real, right? And it, even more, if you make, I don't know, for me, if I make like a website or buy a domain name or make a logo or something, then it's it's suddenly real and I can't run from it. It I think it's a good way to kind of trap yourself in an idea and then you have to make it happen. Just just kind of uh, trick yourself a little bit with a bit of uh, with a bit of um, fear of public shaming for having like a project that, yeah. that didn't work out. So <laughs> I think it's a great idea. If you have something and, and you, and you don't know if it's going to work out, just immediately tell everyone about that. You're going to do it and then you better do it or you know, they're never going to believe yeah. you again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, um, well, that's interesting. I, I guess, uh, in Australia you have more, I mean, all the Americans right now are going to say, ha, it would take me 50 years to, uh, to kind of, uh, to save up six months of, uh, of holiday from, from work. But I assume you have like a bit more holiday a year in Australia, or how does that work? Um, yeah, so I, I get about uh, f- around four weeks, right. four to five weeks um, a year. So, um, so you didn't take you any t- time off for like oh, six, six years? <laughs> <laughs> you know, since I started training jujitsu, all of our holidays have been jujitsu related because right. I live, because I live in the middle of, um, in nowhere, right? So I live, uh, about a 12 hour drive north of Perth in Western Australia in right. the, in the absolute, um, <laughs> desert, right? There's, there's nothing there. So anytime we go away to the, to the East coast, um, or to Perth, we always try to tie in a competition, mm. a seminar, something like that. Um, we very rarely um, go on a trip uh, where we just, you know, go for a holiday, go for some time out. It's always training related. Right. And we don't, I only ever take the time that I need for that event. So I, I, I was saving leave for something. I just didn't know what until, uh, mm. in, until, until we had the six months up. Right. So how do you, um, so, so, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into the head of, of people who, who, who are sitting now and listening to this and saying, I can never do that. So next thing they're going to ask, how are you going to afford, how, how do you afford that? How do you afford to travel for six months with, uh, with, with four kids? What, what did you give? Oh, sorry, two kids, four people. What, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what did you give, what did you give up to, uh, to be able to do that? Um, Look, we're, we're definitely going – like we saw, we did some rough planning out um, on, on, on budgets and that. Right. Because I'm still getting paid because I'm on leave, um, that helps oh, a, yeah, a, lot, course. Course. a lot. Um, so it, it, we didn't have to have a super, super tight budget where we had to save a heap before. Um, that's why we're able to sort of make a decision and then within six months we were away. 
Um, so we do we do budget a fair bit. So we're saying we stay in um, the sort of the cheapest Airbnbs right. we can with um, with a washing machine. Um, obviously, that's a big priority when you're training jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Got and you've got two kids with you. Yep. Um, I think um, you know we because we've been here for so long. You know we don't we we don't out, eat out. We cook. We we go shop at Walmart, those sort of places. Mm. Uh, you know, doing doing everything as, as we would at home, or as we would. Um, you know, if if you were someone in 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 America living this way. Right. Um, so our expenses haven't been too much more than what we would expect as living ho- living at home. Um, so did you rent, is- did you rent out your place at home or something? Are you gone? No, no. Um, my house is just sitting um, sitting at home right. with no, no one in it for six months with uh, <laughs> people looking after it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's going to be uh, it's going to be quite interesting uh, going home and seeing seeing the amount of dust and and stuff everywhere because it's yeah sort of almost been untouched for six months. I, I hope you remember to flush the toilet because I left home for forty five days without flushing the toilet, and that was. I mean, I'm not sure your house will still be there if. <laughs> yeah, no, that was actually a, a priority. I do have uh, a, a friend that um, I hope he's well. He, if he if he hasn't been going around flushing my toilet, he he won't be a friend any longer. Um, that that was uh, one of the priorities is have someone go around because we had to we did go along and turn the water off and that sort of stuff. So mm. um, every every couple of weeks he he's going around turning the water on, right. flushing the toilet, walking through. Um, and and doing that sort of stuff. So right. yeah, that was that was a big one. We were warned about before we uh, headed off. Mm. Well, well, getting back to the um, like budgeting to be on the road, I I find that I was surprised at least when when I actually you know finally hit the road and, and travel for like five months. And and also what I hear from others is that it's very often it's I mean not counting that you're bringing two kids because that makes things infinitely more complicated but often actually being on the road can be much cheaper than staying at home and, and paying rent uh, i think that's um that's something that often surprises people when they when they when they find out like when they actually get out there and uh and see how much money you spend i mean when i was traveling i spent like i got paid as well for my academy at home but i didn't spend more than i don't know 1500 euros a month and you know travel anywhere and live like a relative live like a king yeah. you know in terms of in the backpacker yeah. world you know so uh felt like you're living like a king so you go anywhere you want and do whatever you, you feel like so um so how are um well obviously the the interesting thing about your trip is that you bring in two kids um it's i mean already yeah. traveling like a couple is is complicated i think for for that long but you're bringing two kids how how, how is that how does that kind of work out and you all train jiu-jitsu right do you, do you want to introduce like the whole family really quick because yeah, so there's uh, so myself, um, Adam, uh, purple belt, been training about nine years, a little bit, little bit over nine years. Uh, Dion, uh, my wife, she's been training about five, a bit over five years. She's a blue belt. Um, I've, we've got Lily. She's nine. Hey, Lily. Um, who, who's with me here? Hi. <laughs> um, so she's a she's a yellow belt. Been training almost five, a little bit over five years now, I think, and. We got Kobe, who's six, and he's been training a bit over three years, um, and he's a, he's a grey belt. So, nice. um, yeah, we're 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 very much um, very much all have a bit of a passion for it. Mm. Um, it sort of all, it all grew from my my initial passion, but um, it sort of helps. Like uh, the the kids are always excited to train. Like Lily, I we we can't stop her. Um, you know, we we might go. Oh, look. Today everyone's a bit tired. We might have a day off and go go see some sights. No, no. <laughs> she wants to go. She wants to go train. She wants to go roll, nice. um, and and that that makes it easy. Um, it, it'd be a bit hard. I mean, I could ne- you could never do this trip if um, your whole family wasn't really passionate about it. No, I can imagine. Yeah, you know, if you had to fight the children every time you, you wanted to train, mm. and you know, and you couldn't let them sit. Um, you know, our kids are, I wouldn't say absolute pros at sitting quietly during <laughs> adult classes. I don't think any kids can be um, 
can sort of hold that sort of a title. But um, I think, you know, they're very, very well behaved. Like they, they can entertain themselves while, while we can go and train, um, which is, you know, a big, big plus. We don't have to turn around every two minutes and uh, give them the death stare, even though, even though that does happen um, from time to time. Um, it, it does make it very easy on, on the training side, for sure. Right. So, um, so how, do you, how, how have you been planning the trip? Like uh, how many academies did you go to? So how, how, how long have you been on the road right now? Um, so we left home on the 5th of July. Um, did a quick stop in Perth and trained a few places there, and then and then flew out. So I think we're coming up to, I think we're about five months now. I think we've got about a month and a half. Yeah, until we go back to Australia. Yeah, we got about we we fly out of uh, back home to Australia on the nineteenth of December. So we've got we got uh, about month. about a month about a month left. Right. Um, as far as I think we've been to. I want to say around 25 academies, um, most of most of which were roughly planned, but we're very um, – so we don't – we sort of move – we go somewhere mm. and we plan to, to sort of go there for, you know, from anywhere from about four days up to two weeks. We sort of give out we, – we book accommodation for the minimum amount of time we, we wanted to stay. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we've quite often extended that when we we found out, you know, we really love the city and we're, we're enjoying the training. Um, we've got the flexibility um, to do that in our in our schedule. Only having sort of like an arrival date and an end date out of the USA made it very very easy. Mm. Um, so we didn't have to, you know, leave somewhere when we're having an absolute great time. We could just okay, we're going to stay for three or four more days. Right. Um, how do you which, decide? How do you how do you decide where to go? Um, you see what's normally closest around, right? Yeah, yeah. We we sort of looked at uh, like a rough plan. Um, so we went from we did a little bit of time in the West Coast leading up to the Master Worlds, and then we went uh, we flew to New York and then decided we want to get from New York back to the West Coast, and then we sort of followed. Followed a a little bit of a plan. Like we wanted to go train with a with a. We had a few people on our hit list. Like wanted to go spend some time um, with guys like Bruno Melsafine, um, you know, Carlos Machado, a few a few of the the bigger names um, that we'd sort of been following from time to time. Mm. And then we wanted to um, sort of just just sort of work out a rough path. So we sort of went from New York and then we sort of, went, okay, well, who's in between here and, and there. And then went, okay, look, we'll go, we'll go ha- hang out with Tom the blast for a week and then we'll shoot at Washington. And then we'll, um, so it was very, you know, so we don't even know we're in San Diego at the moment. We're due to leave on Wednesday. We have no idea where we're going next. Um, or if we're going to stay a little bit longer. Right. So that, that's about how organized um, we are at the moment. I think that's a great way to do it too, you know, just have the, the freedom to move around. Being being at home, you're you're so fixed in in your schedule anyway. So, I mean, that's one of the liberties of traveling is just to be able to do what you want, what you feel like in the moment. Or... Yeah, and we, we didn't start that way. When we started, we, we had, you know, we were booking accommodation like a month in advance. Mm. Um, and then we... And then we quickly realised once we started road tripping yeah. around, uh, we went, okay, this is not going to work. We need to just. It's we not, need even, to just... not even necessary these days. It's so easy to, you know, with Airbnb and everything. It's so easy to find a place, right? Except yeah, when, except when you have two kids, it's a little bit more complicated. It narr- narr- narrows down the <laughs> the places you can stay. Yeah, like. Uh... You, you you go from a list where you you open up Airbnb and you go from a list of three three thousand in the area to a pick of five, right? right. And then uh, yeah. and then um and then you probably end up like us in Washington where we end up in a a little bit of a dodgy neighbourhood mm. um, <laughs> where you sort of you sort of run from the the front door to the car, <laughs> head to training, 
<laughs> um, and sort of pull up in the car, look around, make sure no one was there, and then head inside. Um, <laughs> so we've had we've had some fun experiences, and definitely yeah. seen um, you know a, a really good uh, cross section of the United States for sure. Right, and that's good. Uh, so so how does how does all this training compare to your, your training at home? You say you live in the desert. Uh, yeah, so back home. I, I sort of opened a academy because there is no, there was no jujitsu there. Mm. Uh, I first got into it when a, a black belt visiting for work came to the area, met him, trained with him for about three months before his contract ended, and he left town. And you know, anyone anyone who's been doing jujitsu a while, three months is enough to get the bug, mm. and you can't stop. So I then um, sort of, I sort of been traveling for jiu-jitsu for a while so in those first two years i was traveling flying from newman to perth every uh, i'd say once or twice a month in those first two years to go train in perth because that's the closest jiu-jitsu to me how many how many people need to fly to their to training that's uh i think that's very few yeah yeah <laughs> I, i don't think there's very many it was a uh, It, it, it surprised a lot of people back then, um, and this is like 2008, right. 2009 I was doing this. Um, and, you know, from there we started our own little club, been building. Um, we don't have a – so it, it sort of means I don't have a professor or a, um, someone with me all the time. So mm. I've sort of been – I don't want to say self-trained, but mm. I have to work a lot of stuff out myself. Yeah. Um, so – So my jiu-jitsu world is, was and is in Australia quite small. So coming over here and training with, you know, some of these big teams, um, it's been unreal. It's been really unreal. Um, what I've learned is I don't do anywhere as much jiu-jitsu as I, as I should. And I was training uh, – before I left, I was training like six times a week mm. maybe, but not – You know, there's rocking up to training and, and going through some motions and doing some stuff, and then there's really training. And going and training with some of these uh, world-class camps, um, competition co competition guys as well, um, it's been amazing. It's been such an eye-opener uh, to to another side that I hadn't seen yet, and it's been uh, it's been it's been fantastic. Been a bit a bit tired from time to time. I can imagine, yeah. Um, but like now. Now the bodies have adapted a bit, and you know we're, we're training at training at lunchtime, training at night. Um, the the kids are training nearly every day. Mm. We've sort of used to it, and the bodies have uh, adapted pretty well now after five months of doing it. How are um, how, how are these academies welcoming you with with uh, when you show up with with two kids? Um, I, I think we get welcomed. A little bit more than if you just rocked up by yourself. All right. I think when you when you turn up with a couple of kids and you talk to you talk to some of these uh, you know these these world class athletes, um, you know, and you tell them what you're doing, you're immediately welcomed uh, with open arms. Right. I mean, everyone everyone has been so fantastic traveling around, and I mean, it helps when you when your kids are. I've got a, a fair bit of character and 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 well behaved. Um, they just, you know, I think it, I think it, it breaks down the barriers when you've got a couple of kids with you as well. Right. Uh, you know, you get to know you get to know all the the the, the families that are involved with the mm -hmm. jujitsu jujitsu clubs because you're you know you're sitting there as a parent with all the other all the other parents you know along the along the bar along the um the edges of the mat. Right. You know, and you're striking up conversation and. It's just been um, it's been crazy. It we're like we've we've been invited to people's places uh, for dinner. We've we have had we had an invite the other day to go to someone's house for Thanksgiving. Right. Um, it's just it's actually, such a crazy it's probably a good, such a good uh, family. A pretty good icebreaker to bring kids actually. I mean, pretty uh, a, a bit impractical if you if you don't have any kids. Don't don't just grab a, a child and bring <laughs> bring a new jiu-jitsu trip. But yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean. Sometimes if you're, I don't know, like a young athletic purple ball showing up to an academy, there's going to be, sometimes you feel there's a target on your back, but. Yeah. Oh, you, you still definitely feel that from time to time. Oh, but, yeah, um, that's normal. It's, but... it's, it's great to, um, you know, we, we, 
when we, we when we go and talk to some of the some of the these uh these 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 guys school owners um the first thing is like oh um, you know they they wish they they could do it with their families and even mm-hmm. even though they're living the jiu jitsu lifestyle with their with their academies you know they're tied down too um now i'm sure they'd love to go and train around and travel travel the country see all the see all the sites of of the us and and train jiu jitsu as well um so there's been a few that are a little bit jealous um of the trip of course but it's, but it's been um it's been it's been fantastic and like the kid that our children have grown so much doing this their confidence um you know their, their level of jiu jitsu as well um i think you know how, how many friends do you think you've made on this trip lily heaps heaps hundreds <laughs> yeah Hun- hundreds. you know yes. it's been it's been fantastic. I, uh, so, so what? I mean, I can imagine a lot of people would be have some kind of fear of of doing a trip like this with their kids. Usually, when they have kids, they're like, "Okay, now we're gonna stay home, maybe do like a a week, a year somewhere." But what, what would you say yeah. to these people? Um, look, we were, we were, we were a bit like that too. Um, I think one of, one of our biggest fears was like schooling. So. Mm taking the kids out of school for six months. Um, I was, I'm lucky enough that my mother's a uh, school, school teacher, teacher mm-hmm. and she spent some, you know, we, we talked to her about it and especially the age the, the children are now. Look, I wouldn't do it if they were in, say, high school or later on in their education, mm. but being being nine and six, um, obviously that sort of the schooling they're doing, um, you know, we, we can handle that at the moment, I suppose, right. if, Closer to high school, high school's changed a lot since I was there, so I don't think I could handle teaching them mm-hmm. uh, the higher levels. But it's been it's been great. Like the first thing my mum said was, they will learn so much more on this trip than you can ever teach them in the classroom. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is focus on their on their maths, their reading, and their writing. All right. Yeah. You know, everything else. English. Yeah, is is something that they can, um, you know. They, they 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 will pick up a, a little bit later on if, if they drop short. Um, so I, th- I think when you when you look at when you look at that and we sort of you know get that get that confidence from from someone else to say you can handle it. I, I think if you if you have the opportunity to do it and take your kids with you on something like this, um, I think it's life changing for yourself. Uh, but also I think it, it sets a good a good understanding to your children on, on what the possibilities, what other possibilities are out there. You know, that you don't have to just go and do the nine to five, get a mortgage, do all that. Um, or you can and and save a bit of leave and go on an amazing trip when you're an adult. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's, it's just showing them, it was, it was good to show them another side that I didn't even know. Um, cause we didn't know what to expect, but, um, I think they've, they've they've definitely definitely enjoyed the trip and all the and all the that's come along with it. Mm. Well, you, I mean, so so I I moved away from Denmark a year ago with uh, with two kids and and I mean they weren't anywhere near that age. They were just like the younger one was three, and um, I was super scared. It's like the number one thing I was scared of is was like taking my child out of like a safe life with people he knew at home and just rip him out of that and say okay this is better for you i hope uh, yeah and then then see how it goes and, and pretty much i you know do something that made them you know uh, sad in in the beginning and then just hope it would work in the long run and kind of trust that that you were right i mean did you have that fear of, of leaving and taking i mean i you were planning to go back but still yeah so it was quite funny at, at the start i i was I was full full confident this was going to be an awesome trip. Um, why, why Dion was a little bit, you know, getting a little bit worried. We reversed roles as it came closer to flying out. So as it came to the end, uh, you know, you know, a week or two before we were due to fly out, I'm going, oh man, can we do this? Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I started to, I started to worry a little bit. Um, well, she had everything planned out. She was ready to go. Um, it, it definitely was a bit, you know, a, a, a bit scary. You know, when you sort of, you've got a rough plan, you've got a, 
you don't have a return ticket for about five and a half, six months down the track, mm. um, you know, you definitely think, okay, what if, what if it doesn't work out? Um, but I suppose the, the moment we got here and I suppose the first two, three weeks, we definitely knew we'd done the, we'd done the right thing. Right. Uh, maybe we should ask the, <laughs> the child. Yeah. Lily, so, so uh, what do you prefer being in school? What, do you feel like going back to school right now or do you want to keep traveling? I want to go back to school. Yeah, go. She wants to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> but I do you want to keep traveling? <laughs> uh, no, no, you said it now. You, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think. Leaving next so, week. So what, what, what makes you want to go back to school? I miss all my friends. Your friends? Back home? Yeah. Are you, are you sick of mum and dad being your teachers? Yes. There you go. <laughs> so, so it's probably got more to do with uh, mum and dad being your, your teachers as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds kind of rough. Yeah. And uh, how, what does the school say about, you know, taking your kids out for six months? Were they, they were cool with it? Not, not, um, not that they really should decide, in my opinion, but still. No, I mean, they, they were – I mean, what, what were your teachers like when you told them? I didn't tell them. Mum did. What, what, what were they like? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> okay. Mum wouldn't let me go in. Um, so I, my understanding Mom. is that they, 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 they thought it was a great idea. Um, the school – so what we did in Australia, you have to register your children to be homeschooled. So we mm. had to obviously remove them out of the, the school, register them to be homeschooled for the six months. Um, and then sort of you have to give them like a rough plan on what, on what you're going to do. Um, have, having the, having the children and with, with technology these days, um, a lot of their schoolwork's done. So I, I, I bit the bullet and went out and purchased iPads so they could do their schooling. Right. Um, so they do a lot of schooling, um, online through apps like, um, IXL, Hmm. Um, a lot of reading eggs sort do, of stuff. I do some stuff on um, study ladder. Yeah, they do. They do a lot of um, um, school stuff on on the actual iPads. They, they still have workbooks, hmm. um, handwriting, that sort of stuff, drawing, drawing books, all that, all that. But um, you know, a lot of it now with technology, it makes it a lot easier to stay connected. We hmm. didn't have to carry around massive amounts of workbooks and that sort of stuff, which made it easy as well. Right. So uh, when are you going to be back home? I don't know. Um, so we get back home about the, on the 19th of December. Mm. We're going to spend Christmas um, with family who are all in the, around the Perth area um, So because we haven't seen them for six months. So we're going to spend some time with them and going to be home probably early January to start getting the kids ready for, ready, ready for back to school. And um, back to back to work, unfortunately. <laughs> back from the real world. Yeah, which is it, it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to be a hard, um, a, a bit of a hard transition going back to back to the old life. Right. I think uh, I don't think, you know, I, I think our minds are going to be running twenty four seven on on the next adventure or right. the next move or the next thing that we can do because after after doing this. Um, or any sort of trip like this, I mean, you probably know yourself, you can't, once you've seen it and, and lived it, you can't go back to what, to what you, what you did before. Cause it just, it, it seems like it's a, a little bit slow, I yeah. suppose, yeah. the old life. <laughs> so, uh, what if, uh, can people come visit you in, in the, in the desert for training if, if they're in the area or? Yeah, for sure. So we've um, we get a lot of visitors mm. because uh, Newman is a is a, a mining a mining town. There's a lot of people flying in and out from different areas around the country. So um, you know we get we get visitors from from all over Australia, um, which is which is great. Who, who come who come to work and 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 come to train. So we've you know we offer um, you know we've, we've, we're we're a globe a globe trotter club. So we've they can come train for a week for free. So if they're in up up there for uh, for work, they can they can come and, and train, and they do, which is which is great. We've we've got to meet so many great people, even even in our small town. Nice, that's cool. All right, um, I'm looking at the the timer here, and like once again, I went 
way longer than I, I planned. So uh, <laughs> let's, let's let's wrap this one up. Um, it was really nice to uh, to catch up with you guys, and um, I wish you the best of luck for the for the rest of your trip. Thank you, thank you. It's been awesome. And um, you're writing a blog about it, right? If you yeah. Follow it. Yeah. So we've got our. Um, so obviously, you can follow our blog on um, on Jitsu Globe Woody. Globe Trotters uh, Jits Woodies. Um, we've also got a, a bit of a Facebook page, which all our Instagram stuff goes to, and we've even got a bit of a YouTube channel uh, under Jits with Woodies that we're sort of um, filling in the gaps on the on the blog with with some video that we've taken around training different places, um, which nice. is good fun as well. I'll put some links up on the on the podcast page. Awesome. All right. Well, um, have a wonderful day and um, enjoy training, all of you. Awesome. We'll, uh, we've actually uh, got to head off shortly to training uh, as well. <laughs> I'll look forward to uh, to follow the rest of your trip on the on the blog. Awesome. Thanks, Christian. It's been great. My pleasure. Have a nice day. Thank bye. You. Bye. All right. Bye bye. All right. I'm back in the basement. I hope you enjoyed that interview. I thought that was a pretty interesting story. Um, I got a lot of uh, interesting other interviews coming up for the next uh, few episodes, so uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on the bjjglobetrotters.com slash podcast. Um, anyway, I promised to answer a few questions from the our Facebook group, the members of BJJ Globetrotters uh, Facebook group. We had a vote um, with questions, and um, I think I'm just going to take them from the top, really, or at least a few of them, because some of them are really quick. Uh, some of them have, I think I can talk about for a while, but um, we're going to make uh, make it simple and take some easy ones. Um, so the, the one with most votes, I think people really like to hear some drama here. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to disappoint, but... The, the most voted question was, have you ever had unfavorable people show up at a camp? How do you deal with them? I never had any like crazy psycho show up that I had to fight or something or throw out and play bouncer. <laughs> uh, I'm really sorry. There are no, there are no uh, stories here uh, like that. Um, of course, define unfavorable. Um, that could be many things, but uh, I would say no. Um, we have around, we are around, um, I think every year, maybe six to 800 people at the camps uh, come through. And I really never, you know, I never really feel like there are any, anyone there I don't like. Um, I, I, I definitely, I, I know what this comes down to. It's, uh, I'm sure it's a matter of, um, you know, what you give is what you get. And uh, I put a lot of effort into when I when I kind of market these camps um, in all aspects of uh, of 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 the exposure I do for the camps, um, I think a lot about what kind of pictures I put on the website, you know, um, and uh, use some testimonials from the camps. It's it's kind of a good um, douchebag filter uh, to put testimonials and uh, nice pictures on the on the camp pages of people kind of having a good time, uh, looking like their friends and smiling. Uh, I'm sure if if I if I marketed the camps in a different way and I put like super hardcore uh, pictures of people rolling and gr grinding their faces and like not tapping to, in arm bars and stuff, I'm I'm sure it would attract a different crowd. Um, but this is some, this is something I put a lot of of thought into and effort into because I know that's ultimately uh, what's going to attract the right people to come. Um, Obviously, the camps are very, a very social experience, social exper um, experience for people, and um, this is also something that I, I kind of put a lot of emphasis on. Um, I don't really want to do kind of serious training camps. I mean, you can you can go to a camp and and train and do nothing else for ten hours a day if you like. Personally, that's not really my interest. Um, no matter how, uh, I'm I'm not gonna market it as uh, like a serious serious training camp, like super intense, um, nonstop training, eat as I eat and and sleep. Uh, that that's uh, I don't want to market like that because for me personally, I think that would be kind of boring. I mean, but that's just me. And and uh, I think as as I've talked about before, I think what makes the camp camps work is that they. I mean, the way I look at them is that they're pretty much just my 
my holidays. You know, I design my own dream holiday. What do I want to do in a week? Uh, what's like the absolute coolest week I can imagine for myself? And then if anyone else want to join, that's that's great. Uh, if nobody wants to join, I will probably go on my own and do all that stuff. Um, but so far, uh, usually every time I come up with an idea of where I want to go, a few hundred people want to join me. So, I mean, that's a good thing. But no, um, never had any unfavorable people at the camps, really. Uh, there are always some interesting characters and some people who are more socially skilled than others. And um, as always, uh, with a bit of uh, effort and patience and actually getting to know uh, these people, then uh, people I would I would sometimes, you know, if, if I met them in a different environment or uh, I had less energy to kind of, you know, take them on it would I, w- I would probably never you know get to know them but I kind of like at the camps to to just sit down and, and try to talk to people and give them time to to be themselves and and uh, I made a lot of good friends like a, a lot of good friends I, I can't I can't count how many people I would consider great friends uh, that I met through the camps so um, also including some who are incredibly socially handicapped uh, usually just outside of the camps I think um but um yeah it's 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 a very interesting uh mechanism to put so many strangers together uh and do a common activity together for for a week or half a week and uh, see what comes out of it so um then i would i would leave it with that and the next question is have you another kind of drama question have you had backlash from any affiliations in relation to the globetrotters values or rules and did it bother you um no I didn't. Um, I think some people, like a few times, some people have told me they've heard some guys running some affiliation are annoyed that Globetrotters kind of, you know, run such a free, uh, like a free alternative to to their business, to their business of of, uh, giving out belts. And putting logos on on clothes, um, but um, yeah, no, no one ever kind of confronted me with anything. I never heard about anyone like directly who were annoyed by it. But uh, so no, no, no backlash. Um, I think it's it's it, it must be difficult to be annoyed or angry about someone doing something nice for free. Uh, I mean, talking about you know. Helping people to to travel and uh, and get them hooked them up with with training while they're traveling and uh, and all that stuff. So no, um, never had any backlash or any direct negativity. Um, there might be something out there, but it's n- it never really makes it to me. So that's kind of nice. And even if there was, you know, I would definitely just ignore it. Um, I I made a decision many years ago to to not like waste one more uh, minute of my life on jiu-jitsu politics or people politics for that sake um, and I think that was a really healthy decision uh, when I when I was much younger and I trained like some kind of self-defense stuff um, in, in way, I think training was a part of it uh, but but really a, a much bigger part of it was always talking about the other academies like how did they train? How efficient was it? All that stuff. But at the end of the day, nobody competed and nobody was fighting anyone, uh, luckily. So we had nothing to measure against, really. But that was kind of the... It, it just it was just so consuming to constantly worry about how other people were training. Um, and, and looking back at it, it's just ridiculous because we were training to, to, I don't know, defend ourselves in the street. And really, we never had to. Um, because living in Denmark, you don't really have to fight anyone unless you're really, really stupid or incredibly unlucky. Um, so it was absolutely just ridiculous to spend so much energy in my life on uh, on just talking about others and how, what they did and if they were better or like did they know this or this and what if, what if, what if, what if we fought or what if we grappled or something. Um, so... Christian's life as a 19 and 20 year old uh, it was just all consuming in my head and it was kind of nice to let go of that um, 
it helped a lot when I just started to do sports instead, uh, because you know then you, you figure out what works and what doesn't. There's no need to talk about it really. You just compete. Um, yeah, but I'm not even sure how I, how I got to that that thought. Um, but anyway, um, no, never had any any backlash, and uh, I I don't worry about it at all. Uh, I don't want to waste my time on it. I think uh, there are other things to to spend your your energy and any kind of your life on than than thinking about what other people do and uh, if you're better or not than them. So so I just kind of uh, go on full full speed ahead with what I like to do, and then whoever wants to to join in, that's they're most welcome. And if some people don't like it, then that's totally fine. I'm sure they're having fun with doing something else. So so. Uh, I think I'll, I'll stick with those two questions for today um, since the episode got a little bit long um, and I'll get back to some other questions at, at another episode. As always, if, if you have anything you request, anything you would like me to talk about or any questions or about anything, just please shoot me an email on uh, mail at bgjglobetrotters.com and I will be happy to uh, to take it up in a future episode. Um so that's it for uh, the sixth episode of the BJ Globe Charters Pirate Radio Podcast. If you want to check out the older episodes, you can do it on iTunes or bjjglobecharters.com slash podcast. Um, and that's also our website where you can find all the other cool stuff we're doing. Uh, hang on for the video library to be announced uh, shortly within a few days or a week or something. We're still waiting for answer from a lot of people um, who have videos uh, online or in old Facebook groups and stuff. So we're trying to have them put on the on the site and get permission from everyone. So it's a lot of work. Anyway, uh, have a nice day and I will get back with the next episode within uh, a week or two. I have them all lined up so it shouldn't be a month like last time. All right. Thank you for listening and uh, see you soon.